video game industry began as like 14 people in a garage hitting a steel box with a wrench or something and is now the most lucrative entertainment industry in existence. Also, it now has Extreme Assholes, or EA for short, doing things that ruin what should be one of the most pure and enjoyable forms of artistic expression. But then I started wondering, which company has definably done the worst things? In general, I'm sure everyone has an answer to that question almost instantaneously, but that's where me, Seer, internet guy, no authority to bitch about anything man, has come up with a fun-filled way to discuss just how bad every company is. We could sit here and discuss, one by one, the sins of everyone and everything. It could be great, finding out just how bad we're getting screwed, just how much these CEOs keep turning the metaphorical screwdriver in our asses. But instead of a list, I welcome you to the rumble in the crumbling video game industry, where we pick the top 32 companies that I have in my brain at this moment, and using advanced randomizing technology, also known as a hat, I pair them up 16 times and present you the worst video game company competition. Here is the score for this little tournament of shame. The winners are going to be the worst pair of companies that I put together. For example, EA is so bad that they could single-handedly win the whole thing, but in pairs of two, some super combo of dicks could make it anyone's game. If one team has a good company, there are a few, then they have lower odds of winning the contest overall. But who knows, some of these are like the turbo edition of asshole, so maybe even with a good company, they're going to win the whole thing. Also, for the record, I am not a lawyer, pretty obviously, and will do everything in my power to not editorialize or act on unsubstantiated claims. I've done my research, and as far as I know, everything in this video will be accurate information. I've not set out to defame anyone, so when I call out Bobby Small Dick, that's, uh, you know, that's what he's known as. So, no, it's all in good fun for us, at least. Maybe not for the various Emperor Palpatine-esque dicks I'll be ragging on, such as Randy Pitchfork in my ass. Let's go over the contenders, and for the record, the pairing of these teams and subsequent research was done without any expectation of my own. I did not consciously put anyone together, so in a lot of ways, this was a self-surprising competition for me as well. Team 1, Valve and Ubisoft. Team 2, Level 5 and Interplay, otherwise known as losing the competition. Team 3, Bethesda and Gearbox. Team 4, Microsoft and LucasArts. Team 5, Kawhi Tecmo and Activision Blizzard. Team 6, Naughty Dog and Game Freak. Team 7, Rockstar and Capcom. Team 8, Arc System Works and Nexon. Team 9, Sierra and Atari, the grandfathers of the industry paired together. Team 10, Konami and Bungie. Team 11, Riot and Rare. Team 12, Zynga and Epic. Team 13, Id and NCSoft. Team 14, EA and Sega. Team 15, Square and Nintendo. Team 16, Sony and CD Projekt Red. After randomly selecting the teams, I placed them into a standard tournament bracket and got to work arbitrarily deciding which pair are the biggest ball kickers in the industry. Ah uh, yes, here's what most people would consider three pretty good companies and Ubisoft. Valve is everyone's favorite provider of a competently run gaming service, as well as the former provider of amazing games. Built on the success of their amazing IPs such as Half-Life and Portal, they are titans in the video game industry. I'm a Valve fan, I love their games, I use Steam all the time, we all like Gaben, but here's why they fucking suck. The conditions of being an awesome place to work, where you sit around and do whatever you want, eat snacks at the snack bar, and yup, yes, and yeah, is a cultivated image that doesn't reflect actually working there. According to numerous employee testimony, the company is fraught with backstabbing and manipulation in order to secure bonuses and the aforementioned snack bar. Additionally, Valve underwent an antitrust lawsuit that ended up not going anywhere, but raised a few interesting points. Primarily, that Valve operates Steam with next to no competition, and due to its insane reach and structure, can basically dictate the cost of products. Now, since the evidence was more akin to something I would write with the F word attached, it wasn't taken seriously, but considering Valve didn't offer refunds on their products until a few years ago and otherwise told everyone every consumer that they were basically on their own buying from their barely any quality control at all platform, I can understand the criticisms. I have a few more points on Valve, so if they survive, we'll continue the discussion a little later. Now, let's meet the neighbor. Ubisoft is an awful company that basically deserves more shit talk than it's getting. There's some primo non-biased writing for you. Makes Me Soft has an abysmal workplace environment, according to, uh, everyone. It also generally has sketchy practices littered throughout their products. Things like DRM or alternative DRM when they said there wouldn't be any more of that, no siree. And yeah, the workplace. The employees are subjected to a slew of never-ending projects with ridiculously quick deadlines. For six years, there was a new Assassin's Creed. How can that even be possible, let alone good? And when management claimed to want to change things, headlines claiming that management has not changed anything fundamental about the company's toxic work environment start appearing, and you know that Ubisoft licks a big one and two smaller ones. Now, Sony isn't my definition of a perfect company, but they do try harder than most. The biggest errors of the company is being generally greedy and or dumb. Things like the use of proprietary storage, which wasn't good usually anyway, resulting in consumer annoyance, copying things in worse 
diverse ways, such as the PlayStation Move and PlayStation Classic, two products that feel very much motivated by bottom line. The PlayStation Phone. The fuck is the PlayStation Phone? The PS3 had a notoriously bad launch where they really wanted to stab your wallet with their big money stealing stick. Maybe not entirely because of greed, but yeah. More recently, the VP was ousted for pedophilia charges. Figured that was worth a mention. But as far as companies go, Sony fails less often than many others. But can CD Projekt Red carry them to the unceremonious next round? Oh shit! CDPR started life seemingly like the friendly alternative gaming company. But come to find out, they're just like the regular gaming company, subjecting employees to terrible working conditions and having CEOs who plunder the booty known as the bonuses fund. Following the launch of Shitterpunk, sorry I meant to say cyber shit, Sorry, I meant to say shitter shit 2077. Five of the company's board members received bonuses totaling $28 million. The worst part about this event was the gall to come into the public space and talk about how everyone would be receiving a bonus and giving themselves a celebratory rubbing for their own efforts. Additionally, those bonuses were only promised that the employees engaged in extreme crunch leading up to cyberpunk. Turnover became more common and the crunch obviously didn't do enough for the game as I'm sure the developers were aware. But despite this, I feel that since I've exhausted my supply of negatives surrounding Sony and CD Projekt, Red, the clear winners or losers of round one is Valve and Ubisoft. Now, I put a few freebies in this competition, and Arc System Works is one of them. They sit in the corner of the market and make really loved fighting games, and they just seem to care, which is nice. They metaphorically tuck you in at night with their caring approach to making a game as good as possible. I tried, and the worst thing I found is that they've apparently had moments where they really hated content creation and just burned down some channels for it. This kind of behavior is so common, though, that it doesn't even mean much in the grand scheme of things. But can Nexon pull it back? Nexon is very plausibly the company that started the gotcha stuff in gaming way back in 2004. This makes them great targets for ridicule. Additionally, their business model is to make an alluring game that indulges itself with a load of microtransactions and then stopping support for the game and then finally shutting it down. Repeated over and over again, their catalog of games is so long and many of them unplayable. Doesn't mean they give you back the money you wasted though. Additionally, additionally, they got caught straight up lying about their odds on their loot drop chances. In MapleStory, their biggest IP, they were intentionally making it harder to get the very known to them good items, thereby encouraging people to keep paying more for these chances. Sierra Online is one of my favorite video game companies from the old generation. They produce computer games and publish some of the big boy titles as well. And their daily practices weren't so bad until they made one of the biggest mishaps in the corporate gaming world, which essentially doomed their own company and became part of a ripple effect that changed the landscape of the industry forever. In 1996, Sierra was approached by CompuCard, literally Cuck International. As a spoiler, CompuCard was later dissolved for committing the, at the time, biggest accounting scandal in corporate history. With Sierra, they were approached with an offer of $1.5 billion for the company and snapped the deal up after a brief period of thinking that this offer was bullshit. You can blame poor judgment, greed, or simply misplaced trust, but almost immediately the company went through sweeping changes and issues. And as a result of the 1998 huge accounting scandal, the company's stock value died and practically everyone lost their jobs with some employees being remarkably fucked. Blizzard Entertainment was also a part of this randomly. They had been purchased by CUC as well and sold to a subsidiary of Vivendi when things went bad. And yeah, this led to Activision Blizzard essentially, if they had only left the poor bastards alone. Atari, on the other hand, well, they were almost responsible for destroying the entire video game industry. The video game crash of 1983, largely occurring because Atari couldn't care less about the quality of game development and mass produced way too much garbage. The whole catastrophe led to gaming revenue figures going from 3.2 2 billion dollars to 100 million in the space of like no time. If not for Nintendo and some other helpful hands, we would not be here bitching about video game companies being bad. Additionally, Atari has some of the worst plans of anyone in this business. In 2014, their 19th comeback strategy was quote, pursuing an interest in real money gambling and social casinos. Winners of this round are Sierra and Atari, portmanteau to C-R-E for sucking eggs. It's sorry, it's like sorry. Microsoft has never been your best friend, really. Basically, they're just a big mallet and you're a fat piggy bank. We could poke at a few details, such as their stupid ass policy of trying to make sharing games harder or cost money, wanting to make you connect to the internet every 24 hours for games to work, trying to price hike Xbox Live services for really no reason. And then the kicker is that most of these things don't go through because of backlash, which is quite ratish behavior. Basically, greed fuels every decision they make, they constantly try to take away functionality and sell it back to you, and they hate everyone. Oh, and Microsoft just bought out Activision Blizzard, my favorite video game company ever. So now I have to buy Microsoft Live to play such classics as not coming out ever too and doesn't have a chance at being good for. 
partnered with them is LucasArts, probably the company with the least sins on here. As a beloved company since inception, they only have a few small list of mistakes. They hasten production on a few noteworthy products, such as KOTOR 2, which is hardly a severe thing, but led to some difficulties for developers and the like. Uh, wow, yes, yeah, so that's probably another freebie. So really, the question of this round is, is Microsoft worse than the other two companies put together? Shit, they might just be. I can't really find anything it has done bad. This both surprises and annoys me. I'm scouring through things and it just seems like they made games at a few weird moments with their content being controversial, but truly for no fault of their own. All right, id, you get a pass. The race is now between NCSoft and Microsoft. There is plenty of opportunity for penis jokes, but I'm much too dignified for that currently. NCSoft love them a good pay to win model. They lean into this concept hard to the point where you have to participate in the extortion to stay competitive within their products. Additionally, there are allegations of sexual harassment in the workplace with proceedings on these matters being conducted. Finally, funding for a game known as Tabula Rasa was pulled in a move that, while hard to understand exactly what was going on, led to NCSoft paying out $28 million as they forced game creator Richard Garriott out of the company. Call it a biased opinion, but I'm leaning with Microsoft. Take that, fill my ass, Spencer. Microsoft and poor LucasArts proceed. Kawaii Tecmo has one thing that I found that they've done that is scummy, but it's honestly hilarious. Everyone knows the Dead or Alive Extreme series due to large Bubba and Butta, but due to Western standards of whatever or however, they decided to very directly not release the game anywhere beyond Asia. They feared any kind of backlash with their hypersexualization, so they just weaseled out, which I find beautiful. Activision Blizzard, on the other hand, they haven't done much bad at all, and they just they make some of the industry's best games. They have a little fun conventions where people cosplay, and they announce soon-to-be classic titles like Diablo Immortal, and the Hearthstone is still fun to play, please play it expansion. Alright, here's the deal. Activision Blizzard is my choice for the company that is least well-ran. They somehow choose every wrong answer to every problem. Firstly, game development is trash at Blizzard because of an enormous turnover rate, low quality assurance, and chasing more and more cash grab over anything else. And beyond their game development failures, the numerous, literally constant, never-ending PR mistake stream they make is absurd. From the classic, you think you do, but you don't, don't you guys have phones, we actually prefer China, to quick burn the evidence, you stupid fucks. I have spoken, in jest, with jokes, at length, about how bad I believe Blizzard has gotten, but they have a real reputation of being greedy, out of touch, and completely full of shit. Also, also, Bobby Kotick. I'll delve more into that later. I am convinced no one actually likes Zynga. Like, if you love them, I genuinely would like to know why. Their games may be fun, I suppose, of course, but the way they operate is a marvel. Firstly, to entice people to their ATM withdrawing simulator disguised as phone games, they spam their products everywhere. And if hammering you over the head isn't good enough, they have also been found to essentially plagiarize the concepts for their games from popular app store products. There are numerous examples of this, and the behavior is defended by Zynga's CEO, based basically claiming that all gaming is plagiarism. That is the most cartoonish argument I've ever heard. Not to mention, but the company also has allegations of insider trading, as well as having been in legal trouble over using guerrilla marketing where they just put fake dollar bill advertisements all over the ground in San Francisco. Partnered with them is Epic, a studio that basically has a we don't care about how things work, we're going to do things our way strategy. Quite recently broke terms of service with Apple and Google, you know, that's a great thing, and then they played the victim card as if they weren't in the wrong for what they did. Plus, more annoying to gamers, the world over was the Epic Game Store exclusive concept where you had to use Epic's own Use Us instead of Steam platform to play certain new releases. This was hated and it deserved to be. Beyond this, they're good at practicing predatory advertising in order to make the most money possible. Fortnite, with its extreme crossover power, has successfully pandered to children extremely hard while also trying to pull in fans of literally everything from anywhere. Is this a sin? Not exactly, but no one can convince me that their interest in doing crossovers stems from anything except the desire to see the bank accounts rise up and has nothing to do with celebrating any kind of fiction. So it really comes down to Activision Blizzard vs Zynga and Riot, and this might be the hardest contest so far. Zynga and Riot are what I'd consider scummy, but I couldn't find them doing anything really evil. Actibliz is horrendous, constantly somehow upping the ante on their badness. They exhibit just as much greed as either Zynga or Epic, and honestly, I've got more to say on them, so as much might as Zynga, the legendarily bad company in Epic's less bad but still pretty scummy practices have to say on the matter, Blizzard and Kawaii Tecmo advance. Level 5 and Interplay are so underwhelming we're going to speed through this section. Level 5 has been making a variety of just about everything for a long time. Fantastic RPGs, great puzzle games, on and on it goes. They've closed their western branch for underperforming, which is fair enough, but rapidly changed their development direction for greener pastures. This has led to a bit of mifid... mifididity? Mifid... uh... 
This is what happens when you invent words all the time. Miffedness from fans of things, but otherwise, they're a clean company. Interplay was part of so many good games in the 1990s, and without them, the channel avatar wouldn't exist, so there's no way I hate them. Outside of misallocating funds occasionally and also failing to exist pretty much anymore, they're overall harmless. Comparatively, Square Enix and Nintendo. Square Enix is not going to perform great here. First off, breaking news, their New Year's resolution is doing a lot of NFT fuckery, so that's great. More corporate nonsense that detracts from the concept of just playing games for fun. Not to mention, the press release mentions how only a majority of players play to have fun, whereas the rest just buy games for no reason. In lighter news, a Hitman trailer tried to sexualize nuns for some reason. Is this a negative? I don't know. More importantly, they really dig single-player RPG milking nowadays, a far cry from making a humongous RPG and charging 60 bucks for it. Now, you're expected to wait 12 years between major releases and pay them four times for the same product. Finally, in a hyper-funny asshole move, they sold Deus Ex Human Revolution at GameStop while including coupons for a GameStop competitor inside. That's a thinker. Nintendo is the company that's trying to uphold the image of not being assholes the most. They still fail. Firstly, the biggest sin that they constantly perpetuate is completely hating their fan base. Fan music, fan games, celebration of their products in general are met with DMCA claims, scorn, lawsuits, and even grimy attempts to get their mitts in the money with things like the Nintendo Creators Program, a nonsense institution that aimed to allow you to make content that you were already making, but now you just owe Nintendo some of your income as well. Also, as of late, fairly shady practices like limited release windows for re-releases that are poorly made, such as the Super Mario 3D All-Stars collection. I've got a lot more actually, so I'll save it for the next round because Nintendo and Square move on. The sins of Capcom are moderately numerous. They were found paywalling content that was ready and already in the game with Street Fighter X Tekken, which is lovely. In addition, for a studio with so many beloved IPs, there's a gross amount of mismanagement going on, as well as oftentimes shoddy release quality. For one of the greatest and longest developing companies in the industry, all you can really call Capcom is disappointing, from both a development and company standard. Rockstar is just constantly getting smushed with deadlines and dates, not to mention they built their impressive sales figures by intentionally trying to be controversial. They embrace negative press because it really does help the sales department. This was more of an idea they pursued in the early 2000s and it reached ahead with Manhunt, which was so brutal that even employees started to feel uncomfortable with their product. And finally, they crunched so hard on the developers that a bunch of the employees' wives took to writing a letter about how bad the working conditions were. Apparently described how there's a culture of fear, which will kick off my trend of mentioning the culture of X that many of these businesses are proclaimed to have, but I'll get back to that later. Konami and Bungie, oh boy, oh goody. Konami aren't just EA, they're EEA, or excessively extreme assholes. Firstly, they decided to delete the work that was produced on Silent Hills, a highly anticipated release, which then led to a huge backlash from both external and internal forces. Then they just deleted Hideo Kojima from their minds and in a tremendous PR showing, barred him from receiving an award for his work. Then, making life shitty for former employees of Konami, mainly from the Kojima Productions branch, denying health insurance benefits or taking former employees to court if they were interviewed. Finally, they really got into pachinko machines with Konami IPs, which is pretty shitty to use series goodwill to make gambling more enticing. Bungie, on the other hand, is decently clean, but I'll run down the two major things I found. Recent reports indicate that the work culture is also extremely crunch-based while also having a problem with sexual-related biases. They also like to double dip a little much, with Destiny 2 being a good example. Players have been required to buy season passes and also buy new content on top of that, which is becoming a very annoying annoyingly common act in the industry. In general, Konami wins. They are genuinely one of those rule with an iron fist right up everyone's ass kind of groups. Bungie comes along for the ride, of course. Holy shit, I ruled Bethesda and Gearbox. We have a potential winner with these two. Let me just look over to the first round competition real quick. Oh, wow. Okay, so Bethesda starting off, uh, it could be the company that gives the smallest fucking shit about anything working correctly. Every single release they make is plagued with problems, as well as having really rough business practices, not paying Studio Madia in 2001 for agreed box sales, attempting to take over other studios in hostile fashion. Fallout 76 was atrociously misleading and bad, from the special edition being full of lies and then trying to damage control, which led to a data breach for the affected customers, which is like, how can you mess up that badly? Review copies being held until game launch since the quality would have surely pissed off everyone reviewing the games. They had a big hand in microtransactions, including Horse Armor for freaking Oblivion, an offline game released in 2006. Okay, Gearbox, this is a doozy. Having your CEO be Randy Pitchford is possibly the worst thing in any way possible. The guy is fraught with controversy and has some of the stupidest shit ever associated with him. He's a scandal machine. 
Firstly, he was caught with child pornography. Defense was that he was interested in a magic trick featured in the said video. Uh, yeah. <laughs> also, the voice actor for Claptrap accused Randy of, like, assaulting him openly. That's a fat CEO maneuver. I literally could go on probably forever on Randy Pitchford, but it would get redundant. Now, the big boys. Honestly, does anyone on Earth like EA anymore? Or did anyone really ever? Because there's a lot of good reasons not to. A common move of theirs is acquiring studios, churning out games with no interest in creative vision, dumping the staff, and ruining the legacy of the series at large. Also, they basically led the way for the industry crunch standard, where they give the gigantic dick to their workers, forcing overtime and then not paying them, which is, you know, really fun game company here. Also, important to mention, but EA releases so many bad games, it's insane. EA Sports, for example, essentially copy and pasted each year with minor changes. Still $60, though. Speaking of sports games, they tried to get exclusive rights to using players' names, likeness, and team logos, so they'd basically be the only people people able to make sports games anymore. And then with them is Sega. Sega proves that you can be successful while trying to ruin yourself at every available opportunity. Sega went through a really weird bad boy phase in the 90s with Sonic pissing on things for example. Like look at some of these ads. What the fuck? More specifically bad for the industry as a whole was their hilarious blunder with the Sega Saturn essentially screwing tons of third party developers as well as themselves with a surprise release of the Sega Saturn months ahead of time. Made competitors move to Sony and thereby ruin their chances of being a good console company ever again. I have a little more on Sega if we need it, because unfortunately it's actually so sad that in the first round I have to pit Bethesda in Gearbox against EA. No matter how absolutely awful Randy Pitchford is and how trash Bethesda is at being honest, EA is so bad that they could be alone and it would still be genuinely a hard conversation. Add Sega in there with their own mistakes and it's an easier win for EA and Sega. Naughty Dog is fairly clean, but I am willing to throw a little dirt at them. They are yet again described as having heinous crunch times on projects, which leads to beautiful things like extreme turnover, big burnout, and above all else, mishandled products. Plus, their PR oftentimes boils down to a fuck you approach. In several of the interviews and articles I read, they didn't seem very calm and collected. Game Freak has two notes here, I'll read them verbatim. Firstly, lazy fucks. Secondly, possesses rights to the highest grossing entertainment property in the world, but they skimp on random stuff all the time and constantly lie about features and press releases either by omission of details or straight up just not telling the truth. That about sums it up, I don't like them. More great unbiased journalism. Up against these two is Riot and Rare, one company that has shaped the industry with incredible products that stand the test of time, and then Riot. Yeah, so starting with the lesser evil, by far, Rare was actually ruined by Microsoft, so here's a retroactive penalty to them instead. Additionally, there's nothing to say. I can't find next to any dirt on Rare, which was actually disappointing. I expected something. They made Banjo-Kazooie nuts and balls. That's good enough. Riot, on the other hand, everyone has a word for their company's practices. Riot's being bro culture. Also, allegedly having people who flatuate in other people's faces. Why did this happen? Less seriously than the uh, flatuating in people's faces is the, uh, I don't know, copious and long-running investigations into workplace abuse, including sexual misdemeanors, lack of employee support, discriminatory practices, and best of all, they have perpetually lied and failed to improve at any of this. I'm not here to moralize about what you should and should not do at your big old video game company, but I tell you, lying about what you're going to do about something over and over again is grounds for me to start making up words about how bad you are. People are crooks. That's cocks and crooks put together. So yeah, years of just shrugging off this kind of thing because they produced the big Twitch game. That's how the business do roll. And as much as I'm not a fan of Naughty Dog or Game Freak, even in a 2v1, Riot has the bigger defined sins and therefore carries poor defenseless rare with them to the next round. Okay, finally the second round. We're going to be able to break this down far faster. We've introduced all the companies. We have a decent idea of their failures and any extra information I'll give you is just to throw more fuel on the fire. Valve and Ubisoft versus Sierra and Atari. On top of what we've discussed already, Valve can be given the lazy about any kind of game development card as they just say they're working on projects, yet never release anything. They don't even release updates to fix their games that are riddled with bots, for example. And if that's not enough, they're always out there with copious amounts of loot boxes, practically setting the standard for the practice. Brushing up more on Ubisoft, they have extremely scuzzy practices with obtaining all the unlocks for their releases. The game For Honor, which would roughly take two and a half years of playtime to unlock everything, but the process can be circumvented 
disappointed by paying, you know, a small sum of $800. Remember in Super Mario World where you couldn't use Yoshi unless you played the game for 200 hours or you put 20 big ones right into the cartridge slot? Also, they straight up lied about including playable female characters in Assassin's Creed Unity, obviously subtitled Unity for its great inclusivity. And as bad as their mistakes were, Sierra and Atari have little else to expose, meaning that Valve and Ubisoft progressed to the semifinals. Now, Microsoft and LucasArts versus Kawhi Tecmo and Activision Blizzard. So basically Microsoft versus Activision Blizzard. So basically themselves versus themselves. Microsoft has screwed up a lot, but they stand in awe of the almighty ball sucking of Activision Blizzard, and I have to put them further into the competition. Bobby, I want to take the fun out of gaming Kotick. I have to put you up further, my man. Square Enix and Nintendo versus Konami and Bungie. Boy, well, it's a pretty much 2v1 in favor of Square and Nintendo. Bungie is akin to a boat anchor here for Konami. Believe me, Konami is a scummy asshat company, but they just don't have as long a list as Nintendo and Square put together. If this was 1v1, fucks only, Final Destination being the garbage can, Konami is the worst company of these three. But together, Square and Nintendo advance to the semifinals. And as an easy one, just due to the unreasonably large torrent of dung EA carries with them, EA and Sega easily overwhelm Riot alone. Riot sucks and would benefit from talking out of their ass less, but this is very lopsided. Okay, the semifinals, kicking off with Valve and Ubisoft versus Kawhi Tecmo and Active Vision Blizzard. Damn it. Well, here's the breakdown of the company's shortcomings, and this is the point at which I have to break out more details surrounding the big tick himself. Bobby Kotick is an astounding asshole CEO. His history goes like this. Is born. Tries to buy out literally everything that he can. Buys out poor defenseless, nearly dead Activision. Acquires nine game studios in six years. Merges company with the game division of Vivendi, including Blizzard Entertainment and Sierra. Sets sight on the Asian market for reasons that have become very apparent as time went on. God, even even in script writing, it's basically becoming so tedious to talk about everything I hate about this guy. He knocked down his $200 million bonus to a poor, pathetic, blow-me amount of $155 million. Wow. He then said he would conduct sweeping reforms after the scandals broke about Blizzard, but then surprise, he was found to have known about the events the entire time. Even more recently, for no reason, he sat in on Overwatch 2 development and made the developers do random shit in terms of adding this or that, and then he said never mind, effectively wasting everyone's time and delaying the game by more and more. Valve has Gaben, who is really quite up there on the good guy scale, and Ubisoft while having nothing redeeming about them or their CEO, uh, Vies Guaymo, I probably just shat on that pronunciation, Bobby Kotick carries Activision Blizzard to the final round. Let's find out who they're up against. Square and Nintendo versus EA and Sega. Well, it's not terribly complicated here. Square has done and is doing greedy ball sack sucking things, and they are getting worse, but greed cannot carry them alone. Nintendo is incompetent in ways, spiteful in most of their actions, and have had blunders, but really, they're not that evil, being one of the only companies with a fairly positive employee review. Sega is remarkably dumb in numerous outings, but they aren't the most evil company on this list, because EA is the most evil company on this list. I cannot stress enough just how awful EA is, and what damage they are doing to the industry. When your stupid, canned PR response is the most downvoted comment in the history of Reddit, you know you have some real intelligence running the show. They buy out and completely destroy lots of respected and loved studios. They run DRM and act like it's a good thing. They bastardize every product with microtransactions, with many games being insanely pay to win as a result. EA and Sega progress to the finals. EA versus Blizzard is an interesting little argument. They are both atrocious, but I cannot lie, EA has done far more damage to the gaming industry at large. They are a force of nature, destroying studios, prompting others to follow in their greed-filled, evil, ball-sucking, ass-mouth, putting headbutt stuffing, brainlessly douchey ways. Blizzard just sucks completely with terrible office conditions, trading their former amazing goodwill for profits. Kawhi Tecmo is a better and cleaner company than Sega. Sega isn't even that terrible, to be honest. They are a little scummy with their arcade machine luck, for example. They had Sonic pissing on things, but really, they're not that bad. So in the end, I still have to, even with a system that could have overthrown them, put EA and Sega, poor Sega, as the worst video game company pairing on this list. Well, this has been depressing. What started as a concept to bitch more about Blizzard has turned into a realization that all the industry really cares about is money. From bad business deals for more cash, to screwing us all a little harder with each passing year, to claiming that games aren't exclusively for fun anymore, it's easy to become disillusioned. But let me end on a quote that might make us all feel a little bit better. We don't call them loot boxes, we call them surprise mechanics. Dumb fuck. You know another surprise mechanic for us? That big money prying hook that you're constantly shoving up our collective asses.